For at least 10 years preceding the announcement of the prize, many of my colleagues, research colleagues, would always come up to me and say, Lou, you know, you, you're going to win the Nobel Prize someday. Don't worry. You know, just keep up this work. And I would always say, I'm not worried. And please don't keep telling me that. You're creating a lot of pressure. I'm not interested in the prize right now. I just want to keep my job. You know, I just want to do a good job and keep my job. And so that went on for years. Okay, so in 98, in October, I got invited uh, by my friends in Italy uh, to go to Naples uh, to give a lecture. Okay, now, I had no idea the Nobel Prize was going to be announced that time. I mean, I, I didn't follow these things. I learned later that the Nobel Prizes are announced in the first or second week in October every year. But I didn't know it then. It was midterm break at UCLA teaching the medical students. So I went to um, uh, Naples. And Naples, by the way, is where uh, my father was born. He died many years prior to the Nobel but uh, it's ironic that, that, that he was born in Naples. So on the way to Naples, I went to Nice, France first because I was uh, a consultant for a drug company in the south of France. And who would turn down that opportunity? You know? So I went there and uh, fine, I'm walking around getting ready to take my car to the airport. And the day felt great. I felt, I don't know, something in the air just, just felt great. And of course, the beaches of Nice are always very nice. So I get on the plane, I get to the airport, and I'm online, I'm on the queue, ready to get on plane. And an airport attendant makes an announcement and says, uh, is there a Dr. Ignaro here? Is there a Dr. Ignaro here? You have an important phone call. So I say, uh, it's me, I'm here. She gives me the phone and she says, uh, uh, here, you have a phone call, but make it quick because we have to board the flight. So one of my friends from UCLA had called me, and the phone was breaking up a lot. That was the early days of the cell phone, remember, 1998. And the, the last words I heard him say was, you know, have you heard the news? And I said, what news? He said, uh, you won the Nobel Prize. And right after that, no sound. The lady yanks the phone away from me. I get on the plane. It's a 45-minute flight from Nice to Naples. I didn't know what was going on. The flight felt like it was four days, not 45 minutes. And finally, we get to Naples, and I get up with my luggage, and I'm getting off the plane. And I look down, and I see literally hundreds of people in the tarmac right below the steps where you walk off the plane. And, and everybody was, had a, a, a camera, and they were, you could see the flashes going off. And I thought immediately that the president of Italy must be on this plane because why else would be so many people be taking photographs? I looked around. I didn't see anyone. I got to the bottom and uh, my friend, uh, his nickname is Pippo. Uh, he's the one who invited me give, to give a lecture at the university uh, in Naples. He showed me the press release from the Karolinska Institute where the Nobel Prizes are announced. But it was written in Swedish. However, I see this big word on top, and it starts off N-O-B-E-L, and then a bunch of letters, and I didn't understand. And then my eyes drifted downward, and I saw my name. And then I realized that I was awarded the Nobel Prize. So after a few people picked me up off the ground, <laughs> they walked me into the, uh, into the terminal. I met the... Uh, the mayor of the city, the governor of the region, and they whisked me away in a limo. And needless to say, my hotel was upgraded. So that was good. He talked about being picked up off the ground by people that were, you know, there taking pictures and taking in the whole scene. Talk about the feeling of finding out you have that confirmation. Again, you've put your whole life into this and you get the greatest achievement in your field. Of what course. does that feel like? Talk about, because this is something 99.999% of us will never experience. Talk about what that must have felt like in that moment. Well, it felt incredible. I mean, it felt like a, a current of electricity, you know, going through your body. You, you, because, you know, what you get is you get a tremendous adrenaline rush. Okay, adrenaline or epinephrine is released from certain glands. And when that gets into your body, 
it, it's almost like an electric current. So you, all of a sudden you're wide awake. I mean, I've never taken cocaine, but I would, from what my friends say, you know, it was like a, a big snort of cocaine. And in fact, I was wide awake for three days. I couldn't go to sleep. But the, the joy of hearing that was fantastic. And then, and then literally within a minute or so, you, you, you're, you're thinking, you know, why did you get the Nobel Prize? And then, of course, I realized, of course, all the work I did. And thank God that somebody recognized the importance of this work. And now I don't have to go and listen to all of my friends tell me, don't worry, you're going to get the Nobel Prize one day <laughs> because it already happened. But it's, it's an incredible amount of gratitude. You know, there's no instant gratification when you do basic research. Basic research is very slow. The results are slow to come in. It takes years and years sometimes before you can appreciate or somebody else can appreciate what you've accomplished. So it's very, very slow gratification. But once that announcement of the Nobel Prize is made, it's instant gratification. And it comes all at one time. And I just can't, can't believe, I can't begin to tell you how gratifying it is. Because I really, although I knew my work was pretty good, I did not know for sure that I would be awarded this. You know, there are many, many investigators do, who do spectacular work who never get the Nobel Prize. There's only 250 people who have received the, the Nobel Prize in medicine since the first one in 1901. There's not many of us out there. So, you know, I, I was not sure. So that's what made it all, you know, really fantastic once I, once I got it. And then what, what was great about the Nobel Prize also is that literally within weeks, uh, I felt great. I lost weight. My, my stomach pains went away. No more ulcers. I mean, it was like a cure-all. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask about that because there's two different aspects to this. How did life change on a personal level and professional? And you're touching on the personal there a bit, which I want to get a bit more into. You talked about how you didn't have to worry about your friends giving you those jabs about <laughs> when are you going to win the Nobel Prize because, you know, you had done it. But this was, you know, you still were a middle-aged guy at that time. And you you done all this hard work and, and you have this this award how did that change things for you personally, having that pressure off of you? Because you've already had that accomplishment. It must have taken an immense amount of pressure off of you. Tremendous amount of pressure. And it really changed my life, uh, my, my life dramatically. And perhaps in different ways than it has changed other Nobel laureates. At the time I was awarded the prize, I have a, had a very active research laboratory at UCLA Medical School. Lots of uh, NIH research grants. I had more money than I knew what to do with. I had plenty of people in the laboratory. Um, that was great. And of course, for a couple of years at least, I continued to do that. And I also thought, well, gee, you know, because of the Nobel Prize, I could probably raise a lot more funds and maybe uh, build or have built a cardiovascular research institute and on and on. And so I started to consider these things. But at the same time, because of my getting the prize, so many other opportunities came up. Uh, I ha was invited to serve on a number of different um, board of directors. I was uh, uh, asked to travel to so many different countries throughout Europe and Asia to serve on committees um, and get paid for it, you know, by the way. Uh, to work with pharmaceutical companies, to give them ideas to develop drugs. And then, you know, I would get compensated for that. Uh, I had never traveled much before. All of a sudden, I found that twice a month, I was traveling, mainly to Italy, which I like, because that's where I first heard about the prize and several pharmaceutical companies got a hold of me there. But I was traveling to, to, to Italy. I was traveling to Paris quite a bit, uh, to, to Tokyo, so many different cities in Europe. And I was beginning to like that. I was beginning to really enjoy that and doing other things. I quickly realized I was not humanly capable of doing both. That is, 
I could not run my research program and build an institute and continue to travel. So I had long discussions with uh, my wife, Sharon, who's an anesthesiologist. And I said, you know, Sharon, I think I'm going to try to build a research institute. And she said, are you sure you want to do that? That's going to take away all of your free time traveling here. You know, you won't be able to consult for uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies, cosmetics companies. You won't be able to go to Paris and stay at the Ritz anymore. I mean, do you want to give all that up uh, and, and just stay here and do more research? And then she said, well, what more research are you going to do? That was the key. Then I started thinking, what am I going to do? There were lots of things to do, but I have to tell you that the, the important discoveries yet to make, um, I, you know, I just didn't know how I was going to approach that. So it would have been fun, but I decided, making a long story short, I decided to tame down my work in the laboratory. And over about a five or six year period, I gradually let my research grants run out. I helped my people get opportunities in other laboratories. And then I built up my extracurricular activities and uh, began to work with other companies, helping them you know, develop nutritional products or helping to improve a, a healthy lifestyle, working with pharmaceutical companies. I almost took on the, uh, I strongly considered the position of uh, directing, being director at the uh, FDA and also the NIH. I was considering all these different uh, activities because you see, they were different. They were different than what I had done all my life. And, you know, I was happy to receive the recognition uh, for making my discoveries. And actually, more important than, than, than receiving the recognition, I was able to make these discoveries. I mean, my work led to the understanding that healthy diet and physical activity promote longevity. My work led to Viagra. My work led to other cardiovascular drugs being developed. So, you know, I was pleased. And I guess I just wanted to go play around now and just travel and do things that were unrelated to my work. That's the decision I made. And I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Retirement is a great thing, let me tell you. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. And then I realized that I was awarded the Nobel Prize. I just want the world to realize how important nitric oxide is.